the best advice I could give anybody my age, being on the site or not, is with any type of arrangement or relationship, do not ever get in a serious relationship until you've had at least like three. And make sure at least one of them is toxic because you need to know what to avoid. Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Amy is joining us today. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? You've got a job yet? No. <laughs> well, yes. Yes and no. Yes but and no. no. Yeah, but no. Like I'm doing uh, this thing called Upwork, which is interesting, but you got to like come for jobs. I don't know. I'm applying pretty much everywhere. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. You ever thought about finding yourself a sugar daddy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> I know. I know you're struggling right now, and so you're kind of taking a little break. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of resetting things. and Yeah, I need to get my energy kind of back. Yeah. Like, I think that's really healthy for people, you know? Like, I was talking to uh, my one sugar daddy yesterday. Like, we've been hanging out a lot, and because now he's back in town. You know, he's like, he kind of brought up some really good points. He's like, you know, he's like, that site can just be so it just gets so tiresome and he's like, it's addicting. So that's why he's like, I feel run down. He's like, I, you know, he's been trying to find like a third for us mm-hmm. and uh, oh, just to play with spicy. Just to, yeah. Just to play with and whatnot. Yeah. But the problem is, is he's like, these girls are just not quality girls. <laughs> yeah. So it's very funny. Well, I have a story for you. Yeah, let's hear it. So, you, you know, I've had a little problem myself this year because I, I keep finding some that I'm interested in. And then uh, two months later, a month later, they just ghost me. And then I find out they have significant others, like a fiance oh. or a, a boy that they're interested in now. And so I kind of got left they on the tell sidelines. You? Do they tell you no. that they're single? No, they're just no. gone. I they just, just don't share. Things that kind of pop up, like when I'm in on Facebook or TikTok or whatever, I'll say, here's somebody that we think you know because they're in my contact list and they pop up. I'm like, oh, there she is. And there's there's her fiance. Oh, that's inter- Oh, interesting. They were together when we were together. Oh, so little things like that. Actually, it makes me feel better to know what, what happened. But so, so yeah. So you prefer to know. Well, yeah, absolutely. Communication is huge. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm a I big boy. Why, People, why they feel they can't share that, though. I don't know. That's kind of weird. But sometimes... But- Sometimes it leads to better things, you know. What if they if they share? No, if they leave. Oh yes, yes, yes. So yes. Last yeah. Sunday, a couple Sundays ago, I'm like, ah, we start this exhausting process over again, right? So mm-hmm. I'm I'm on the site, and it was like eleven o'clock in the morning. I saw a few profiles I was interested in, and there was this really one that that jumped out and caught my eye. So I messaged yeah. her, and she's like, hey. Yeah, you want to you want to meet in like an hour for lunch? Uh, oh, wow, quick. Yeah. Super fast. And we had a 9-hour lunch date. Holy cows. Well, that's awesome. So, yes. She's wow. a, actually a very high-quality girl. 9, nine hours. They they're, they're on you the guys site. Do? Uh What'd you we do? We talked. Believe it or not, we we ate, we talked, and we ate some more, and we talked some more. We just got to know each other. Oh. And you know what? I, I have her in the studio right now. Oh, <gasps> you do? Yeah, welcome, Kimmy. How are you? Good. Thanks for the introduction. That was super sweet. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So you're Hi, a, Kimmy. You're a trooper to come right in after knowing me for a whole week and a half. Seriously, you, you don't even know the half of it, you guys. We're I mean, about I to find into out. His house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so she has a lot of common interests business wise, just in life wise. She started telling me of things about her life. And what she's wanting to do and what she is doing. And I'm looking at her going, God, you're 30 years younger than me. And that's what I'm doing now. It was very impressive that somebody at that age was that, you know, had that desire and that drive. Because, you know, in my early 20s, you know, I'm I'm sitting there trying to figure out where the next frat party is. (laughs) Right? So. You were in a frat? Well, no. I was trying to find out where the frat party was, though. 
They were letting you in. <laughs> it must have been different back then. They don't yeah. let guys in anymore. No, they don't let guys in. Anyway, we're going to get a little into uh, Kimmy's background because you started on the site fairly young. You kind of had some curiosity about it. Why don't you tell us how that whole, whole thing evolved? Yeah, so actually I started on the site, I was, I had just turned 20 years old, so I think, honestly, I think when I started I was 19, just mm-hmm. about to turn 20, and what got me onto the site was, this girl was like, you kind of s- remind me of this influencer, Tana Mojo, I, d- I don't know how to say her last name, but I'm like looking at her like YouTube videos, and she has this one where it's, talking about a sugar daddy and i'm like oh you know (laughs) i had never really known anyone with a sugar daddy at that point so i'm watching this video she's talking about how she literally went on this sugar daddy date and met like janet jackson and she's with this famous director she can't disclose his name and he like brought her a tennis bracelet that was worth like fifteen thousand dollars i was like what sign me up for that program i know i'm like that sounds so fun like that is how i what i want to do in my 20s yeah (laughs) So then I get on the site just to explore. I actually got in a huge fight with my dad. That's why I was like, I think this would cure my daddy issues. I'm going to get on the site. And so, and because I just knew he would be so pissed. I mean, being 19 and my parents are fairly conservative. So yeah, I got on the site and I'm meeting some people in Seattle. I've like gone out for lunch. I'm super innocent. I... (laughs) It was, you know, it was really hard because, like, they wouldn't really even bring up, like, the intimacy aspect of things. But, you know, obviously most men on the site are expecting that, right? I go on some some dates and nothing really comes of it. I'm like, where's this, like, big money at people are talking about? Uh, Then I had this idea to move to L.A., with my best friend and then a lot of big money in LA a lot of big money in LA and that's when I met my last arrangement so you met you met somebody that you went long term with yeah yeah so how did that happen and how did that whole thing come about we started talking when I was in my hometown and so then you know for two weeks he was basically just waiting meeting me and for those two weeks you know he wasn't weird or like asking me to like see me naked we had facetimed a few times like while he was in the car just talking about our day super genuine conversation Mm -hmm. he was 28 and at the time i was i had just turned 20 so i was like it's a little older but like 28 you know at that point i had never you know been with somebody intimately older older than me at all so yeah, so then I, I'm, when I moved to L.A., I finally met him, and I was just blown away. Mm-hmm. The first day I met him, we had a really great date, and then we ended up seeing each other every day, and it turned into some, some crazy shit. I mean... Well, you moved in? I moved in right away. Yeah. I, I moved in within a month. It was not something I wanted to do or was planning on doing. He quite literally forced me to move in with him and then was like, I'm paying your rent for your other, cause I couldn't get out of my, you know, agreement. I had agreed that I was trying to move down there for only three months. And so I was, I, I had a roommate. I was supposed to pay my part of the rent and he just covered it while I lived with him. So you basically yeah. went from looking for a sugar daddy to being married. <laughs> I mean, but, cause moving in is pretty much like being married. Well, that's the crazy part. We almost were married. Yeah. He literally tried to marry me, like he proposed to me. Wow. And we were only in an arrangement for about a year, so yeah. yeah, things moved really fast. So tell us what happened, because it's hard to know somebody that quickly. Like, you don't really get to the crux and the, the bolts of what that person is all about. So here you met this guy, you, you're living with him within a month. Things seem great in the beginning, right? The honeymoon period. Are you loving it at this point, or are you still kind of just going with the flow? So at first, I had a lot of happiness. I was super happy because I've always worked two jobs, essentially. Mm-hmm. And going to school. You have two two yeah. degrees. Yeah, I do. Yeah, a double I do. major. So I, I've always been super busy. Having you know classes be online at this point because of COVID, and then not working. He didn't want me to have a job, which, by the way is a red flag because 
it essentially unless they're they're paying you way more than a job would be then or like somehow you know i mean he had his own company he could have put me on payroll or something so mm-hmm. i had pay stubs but he, he did not at a certain point he stopped we stopped with the allowance thing which i wasn't we never had a conversation about it it just kind of happened and that kind of irked me and he just didn't want me to work. I mean, he wanted me to stay home full time. And you didn't go to school, get two majors. Yeah. You're young and ambitious. You, you didn't want to just stay home. No, I didn't. It was, it, it, that part really was hard to explain to my family. I'm really close with my family. Mm-hmm. So, of course, they're calling me, seeing that I'm like living in this like 2,000 square foot, you know, in this 2,000 square foot apartment in downtown LA. It's like right across from the Staples Center. Nice. You know, we have a view of everything. It's, like, all glass. There's, like, famous people who live in our building, like, famous rappers, famous NBA players, like, just everyone. I've met so many interesting people. And my parents are just like, what's going on? You moved down there. You were, you know, splitting a one, not even, it was a studio. I was splitting a studio with my best friend. Mm -hmm. I'm, I move out of there within like a month and a half and I'm moving in with this guy. They're just shocked. Yeah. You know, I had never had, understandably, like, yeah. I had never had a serious boyfriend before. And then they're like, and he doesn't want you to work. Oh my gosh. That was my mom's worst nightmare. Yeah. So how did that progress? Yeah. So we just, you know, sometimes you click with someone. I think that because I hadn't been on the site very long, it really skewed into a relationship versus an arrangement a lot of people are really like well it's a a relationship but you know i want a long-term arrangement they call it an arrangement for a reason Mm -hmm. is because like in a way at the basis it is transactional but you know there there's a connection there's other things that come into it that make it a little more like relationship we just fully like went into the relationship aspect of it yeah and I, he wanted to. He was very aggressive and wanted to see me like every single day. And I don't, I don't do that anymore. Like if someone wants to take me on a date every single night, I'm like, sorry. Mm-hmm. Unless you have big bucks, we're not going on a date every single night. Like yeah. I, twice a week is my max. I'm not, I'm not doing more than twice a week because then you get to a point where you're moving too fast with somebody. Boundaries start to become wavy, and then you're in a situation where you might even be in love with somebody, and you're not you're like, fuck, I'm not even, I'm not even in arrangement anymore. This is not what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was because I was seeing him every day. Yeah. And then he wanted me to come over every night. He's like, there's no point in you staying with your friend. Every night I was over there and then he was Ubering me back and forth because he was busy. So he wouldn't drive me himself. And then he's like, I'm spending a lot of money on these Ubers. Like, can you just stay? Because you're staying the night tonight anyways. (laughs) One thing turned into another. Yeah. Yeah. So then the the relationship turned kind of a, a little bit violent, didn't it? Yeah, it it did go violent. So what's crazy about it all is there were a lot of things I did not know about him. We spent every day together. Mm-hmm. When you live with somebody, that's how it is. Especially somebody who owns their own company. Right. They don't work a nine to five uh, essentially, I'm like the dog at home waiting for him to come home. I mm-hmm. I had nothing else to do, and he did not like me leaving the house. So I, I quite literally, oh my gosh, I was the most pale I had ever been in my life living in Los Angeles, California. Right. Come on. That's just to put, put into perspective how I just never went outside. So all I had was him. That's all I really w- had to look forward to. And so we spend every single day together, lunch, dinner mornings nights and he had dropped on me that he was married oh (laughs) yeah like still married he he still yeah he was married to a woman that he had a baby with and what's crazy is that it was like what the fuck and you guys were engaged (laughs) He, that's this was before we got engaged can you believe that i still oh god I, I was, okay <laughs> i thought he was oh my god i thought he was doing both oh gosh well okay well he low-key was doing both but we'll get into that so about a month and a half into our relationship no more it was a little more than that two months he dro- he told me he had a child in canada and i was like all right like he told me the story about it he was like 
yeah, you know, I was with, like, I don't know if it was his high school sweetheart, but they had been together for a while. His kid at this point was, like, five years old. He was 28, so he had the child in his early 20s, and he hadn't been with her for a long time. Of course, now they're in different countries. And so he told me about his one kid, and then two months into his relationship, I kept seeing this name popping up on his phone, and he would, like, look through my phone whenever he wanted, which, again never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> you need your privacy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, well I want to look through your phone. And he started getting all panicky and like, <laughs> Oh yeah. The, the first message I open is this girl. And I'm like, who the fuck is this? You know, I'm just so weird. And he's like, oh. he's like this. He's like, nobody really knows, but I have another kid. And I'm like, shut up. You have another kid. I mean, like, you already have one kid, and I'm with you, so, like, it's not a big deal you have another one. But the story was that he knocked up somebody he was working with, Mm -hmm. an employee of his, and not even, you know, I mean, I know what his type is. Like, she was just not his type. No disrespect to her. I love her. I met her. She was a great woman, best personality, but, like, really not his type. And she ended up, she didn't even know, because she was cheating on her boyfriend. She thought it was her boyfriend's kid. So the baby was nine months old when she had to do four paternity tests and found out it was his baby. Isn't, come on, tell me that's not the craziest thing. So there were secrets. Later on, he tells me that he's married to her because he, he's from Canada. So he is not a citizen here. So to secure his citizenship, when she found out he was pregnant or she was, she had his baby, you know, because she didn't know until he was, the baby was already almost a year old. Once she found out, and she told him, and the paternity test confirmed it, he he bought her a Range Rover and like paid for her apartment and bought her a house, and then was like, "I want, you know, this to be our agreement. We're gonna get married just on paper so that I can secure my citizenship here." And so I had no idea about any of this until we got in a huge fight and somehow he brought it up he was like well you know i was gonna marry you and now i have to go with my other choice and i'm like what do you mean then he's like well i married her before i met you what yeah. <laughs> i was just like i, yeah, I you're finding all now how many months into this you were with him about a year or so right yeah this how, was how many months into it was this Oh my gosh, probably like seven months. Okay. Yeah. After that, it was, I was like, what else don't I know? I mean, how do you live with somebody and you're with them every single day and you don't know these things? Right. I had no clue. Well, they had a one night stand. They had no type of relationship before. So that's how they were able to hide it so good because there was no feelings involved. Just strictly, and that's what's, what a strict agreement is, I guess. <laughs> and so then he was like, well, the thing is I love you and I want to marry you and we live together so it would be easier to prove. So I'm going to divorce her and marry you. I was like, well, I mean, you have a McLaren, so I guess we would have to split that <laughs> if we got a divorce, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was just so stupid. I I was just, I, I think I was, I was vengeful just because I was upset with him. He had lied to me about a lot of things and he had definitely been cheating on me. So, if, you know, if I'm going to get anything out of this, I mean, he stopped giving me any money or anything. So at that point, I was like, I have less in my bank account. I have less assets than when I met you. Like mm-hmm. I might have you know, red bottom, three pairs of red bottoms and like purses, but they're, none of them are like worth anything compared to like all of the money and the opportunity cost of right. not being able to make connections or m- network. He was so jealous. I couldn't have a job. I couldn't save any money. I was just draining everything. He was draining me. Oh my gosh. And on top of that, I had lent him because one week when. Oh my gosh. I had lent him $30,000. You lent your sugar daddy $30,000. I can't believe I I forgot I lent him. Oh my. Yeah, I did. I did. It was for the McLaren. Yeah. 
he lost funding that week and he was like i'm gonna wait i have to wait a lot of his money was tied up in his company at all times because they were always trying to they were growing Mm -hmm. uh he had moved from houston to la and so when they were in houston they were big they had a ton of sales guys and then in la they didn't have a ton so what's crazy is when i i lent him thirty thousand dollars for this car he took until the week i left him to pay me back wow which was mm, like seven months so it was awful he was using it against me so i couldn't leave him basically i see yeah yeah it was it was very toxic and that's why i was so vengeful Uh, you know i would never agree to marrying you but now I'm going to, and I'm going to divorce you mm-hmm. and take half of your things <laughs> because you, you know, you're just an awful person and I, you've drained me, Yeah, you know, I wanted a leg up, but I never got a leg up. If anything, I just got a whole bunch of debt once I left. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's better to just be careful. Don't play games with people like that. <laughs> yeah. So you left, you know, we won't get into too much, but there was some violence and a restraining order. And so you got yourself out of a bad situation. Oh yeah. So, you know, that week, first of all, I, I was convinced he was gay. He was, uh, he was homophobic. He was so homophobic. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are conservative, maybe don't agree with that. He, it wasn't that he was a conservative. He wasn't, he just hated gay people. Anything that had to do with being gay, trans. He loved he loved his kids, but he was like, if I find out they're gay, I'm disowning them. Which I was like, come on, that is crazy to yeah, say. Absolutely nuts. I mean, I I was like, I can't I can't deal with this and it was just too much. But we had a shared TikTok account and one time I was scrolling on there and this beautiful girl I think she was Middle Eastern or something. Dark, long hair, like her whole body was done. You know, big butt, big boobs. Waist was invisible, just gorgeous face. Pops up and says it's in his contacts. And under her video, it says hashtag transgender. Like she's a very openly transgender person. Then I go on her account, it's all hashtag transgender, rainbow flag, everything. Instagram, same thing. So there's no hiding that this person's transgender. Like, she's very open about it. And she was in his contacts. And I'm like, for what reason would this beautiful girl be in your contacts unless you had been with her in the past? And so I confronted him about it. Oh, my gosh. that was. He's like, we're supposed to be getting married and you're questioning my sexuality. I'm like, hey, look, there's nothing, I don't have anything against that. To me, you're, you're still a man if you had sex with a transgender girl. I don't care. She's beautiful. I just want to know because you are very openly homophobic. Mm-hmm. And so I just want, want to know, are you into that? He was... <laughs> came unglued, didn't he? He came unglued. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so then the night after that, this is this is all within five days of me leaving him, by the way. Okay. And it was like day out. It really took day after day after day of unfortunate events for me to just be like, okay, I'm out of here. As if everything else was not enough. The next day, he's like, texts me, probably to make up for the day, night before, and is like, be naked when I get home. And I was like, great, because most nights he's like, oh, he's dropping. Oh, I'm with the guys tonight. Oh, I'm with the guys tonight. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) So I'm like, great, thank God. And so, you know, it's 9 p.m. He's supposed to be home. I get a text. Sorry, you know, I'm with the guys still. I'll be home soon. And I'm like, okay. Again, another 15 minutes. An hour goes by, an hour and a half. I got a FaceTime. His buddy picks up the, his buddy is calling me. I'm like, why is, he's like, they're obviously all drunk, probably coked out. He's like, Nicole, you're the best. I want my girlfriend to be like, you know, I'm like, yeah, probably because, you know, he was walking all over me. What do I, what did you want someone like that? Yeah. <laughs> just all of these things. And I'm just pissed. I'm like, whatever, give the phone back to him. 
And I'm just mad. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to our other unit because we had two units in the same building. I was Airbnb that unit. And I'm like, I'm going to go finish setting it up. And I'm going to do some homework there. And I'm staying the night there. So do not, I don't care what you do. Just go, you know, live your truth with your guys. (laughs) So then I'm just getting a bunch of calls. I'm ignoring him. You know, about half an hour goes by. I'm at the other unit and I get a knock and I open the door and it's him and then 10 of his friends. And I was like, really? You couldn't even just come home alone after all of that? So much, like, it's just so disrespectful. That night, a girl I knew, she was like, hey, are you alone? We need, I want to talk to you. And like, they, I kicked them out. They went to the other unit. And I'm like, yeah, I'm alone. And she's like, are you sure? Because, you know, they, he didn't want me talking to this girl for whatever reason. She was, she uh, basically told me that one of his guy friends told her that he had been cheating on me. We had a very detailed story. She had a detailed story of what he said in the chain of events that, like, I was gone visiting my parents. And then he had another girl over and she was a two. And she was so, she was nothing at, at, compared to me, all this stuff. And then... They're just like talking about she's just talking about like what he's saying not like when they're on their like guys nights they have like different girls come and i'm like oh um, i'm like you, i'm just looking at all the red flags because his all of his friends used to do that mm-hmm. i'm like wow i should have known all of his friends would have girlfriends and bring different girls to dinner every time we would go to dinner i was like oh my god i was so ashamed of them i i had even told that a girl once because i was like i'm i'm sorry just run for the hills but it was happening to me too just nuts so then i had just found out and i'm like i text him I'm like your dog and your cheater all of those guys better be out of our house right now and like i'm coming over i come back i'm coming over in 10 minutes i come back in like 10 minutes they're all still there i was again livid with disrespect so upset so we finally got to talking. He's denying it. I'm like, you know what? Whatever. I don't care. Let's just, I'm just going to go to bed. Because the next day, my cousins were coming with their significant others. We were supposed to have a couple's trip. And they were supposed to stay in our other unit. So I was just like, I just was on my ends. I didn't know what to do. I was like, you know what? I'll deal with this later. Right now I have family coming and I love my family. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to ruin their trip for this. Like, I can break up with them whenever I want. Like, I could, let me just wean this out for the weekend and pretend like it's fine. So then the next day comes, and keep in mind, the whole reason he was with his guys the, that whole week, every single day, was because he was having team time. They all worked for him. So that when my family came into town, he could give his undivided attention to them. It's Friday. The next day, my family comes in it's around like noon to like five is when they're coming in. I don't even remember. And I pick up my I pick them up from the airport, drop them off. I'm texting him. Where are you? He's at lunch with his employee. I'm like, oh, you know, my cousin's coming to town today. He's like, oh, well, I didn't know I had to be there for picking them up for the from the airport. And I'm like, OK, whatever. This is another like. I, I, at this point, I'm so done. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. As I'm waiting for him, he gives me a call. He's like, oh, by the way, like, I talked to my lawyer today, and for, like, us getting married, we're not getting married in California because the laws favor women, and we're also getting a prenup, and we're, so you're going to need to sign that. And then what else did he say? Oh, yeah, and I'm going to buy my house and my Rolls Royce before we get married because... That way you won't be entitled to half of it if anything happens. I'm like, oh. Yeah. At this point, I'm like, there is absolutely nothing left for me here. It's time to be done. I'm like, there's, I'm like, you're going to disrespect me. You want me to have your kids. You want me to sign a prenup. You don't want me to work or have a dollar to my name. So what? In like 10 years when I'm suicidal because you cheat on me every day, I'm going to leave with nothing and kids. Like, you're crazy. Just just such, like, I was just at my end. I couldn't do it anymore. But my cousins were in town. So, you know, I was like, I, 
I can do this for two more days. Like I did this for a year. I can do it for two more days. Let's just, let's just get this weekend over with. You know, we go out just me and him for dinner, you know, just to like, be like, okay, we're, let's just be calm. You know, like I, I was just trying to calm down because I was very passive aggressive at this point. I couldn't keep it in. Dinner was fine. We go to this hookah place and he decides he wants to invite all of his guys. I'm like, you know what? Whatever. You can invite your guys, whatever. I'll just be with my cousins and their, you know, boyfriend slash girlfriend. So we're all sitting at this table. He's so obnoxious, so drunk, so annoying. I'm like, ew. And then afterwards, he's like, okay, everyone back to our place. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I've had enough. It's like 1130. We're all over there. He's like, babe, can you make me a hookah? (laughs) I'm like, sure, babe. So I go make him his hookah. I'm just being like a little like, you know, server bartender, helping out, doing whatever, being being the best girlfriend I can be. He's like with his buddies in the bathroom doing coke. And my cousins obviously know what's going on. They're not stupid. They're his age. You know, they're like, Nicole, what's this? And I'm like, I'm not doing anything. Like, you know, because there's rolled up bills everywhere. <laughs> like, right. So... I'm just embarrassed, and it's one thirty at this point. My cousins are ready to go to bed. They had had enough. They weren't, you know, doing coke, so that's a normal time to just be, like, tapped out. Him and his friends are still up. I stay up with them until, like, 3.30. I'm sitting on the couch about a f- I'm falling asleep. If It's, like, misery listening to them talk because they're talking about the same goddamn thing for hours. So... <laughs> <laughs> It was misery. Yeah. He coked out, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> he comes over to me. He's like, do you want me to tell them to leave so that we could go to bed together? I'm like, that would be lovely. Yeah. And as he goes back over there and he's like talking to them, waiting for him to tell them to leave, I pass out. It's three. It's almost four in the morning. I pass out. I wake up like two hours later on the couch and guess who's all still there? The boys. They're all still there. They're all still there. Having the same conversation. The same exact conversation. I wanted to scream. I was, <laughs> I was about to go put my head in a fucking wall. I was yeah. like, what the fuck? This is ridiculous. So I go downstairs. I'm at my ends. At this point all week, I haven't even cried. I'm just crying. I'm like, I hate my life. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. I hate them. And... So I call him and I'm like, come downstairs right now. And he comes downstairs and I'm like, I hate you. (laughs) He's like, what? He's just confused because I I had tried to play it cool the whole week. Like, whatever, whatever, whatever. And he's like, I love you so much the whole week. Because obviously he thinks he's just getting off with everything. And I'm like, no, I actually hate you. Like, I don't know. I hate you. There's nobody I hate. But you, I hate you. And you disrespect me so much. You, I've never met somebody who's so disrespectful. He's like, no, I love you. I don't, dis- I'm not, dis- you know, I respect you. And he's like, I'm like, no. No, you don't. You cheat. You don't, you're, you don't do anything that you promise you're going to, you say you're going to do. And you, you don't care about me or my family at all. And so I'm like, I'm done. And I'm like, where are your friends right now? He goes, they're upstairs. And I go, and that's where, like, the door is. And I go, oh, okay. Are they going home? And he's like, well, you know, I told them they could stay because, and, like, we have, like, we had a strict rule, like, no one stays at our house. Family, friends, no. Like, you know, he had enough resources. We have enough spots that, like, uh, we can either Uber someone to their house, get them a place to stay, or, like, you know, we don't have to have them stay in our place. Like, we don't, you know, we didn't have another bedroom. It's a, It was a two-bedroom, but the other one was an office. So, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. They're sleeping upstairs on the couch, on the floor. I'm like, what the fuck? No, I don't want these people in my house. But, you know, I didn't say anything. I Instead, I was at my end. So I said, <laughs> I was like, well, since they're staying the night, I'm leaving you right now, so you can either make them leave right now, and then they don't have to see me leave you, or I can embarrass the shit out of you and leave you in front of your friends, which are his employees. So, you know, watch, imagine, like, being at your boss's house, and, like, his girlfriend that he, like, loves is just, like, bye. were you already all packed up and ready to go? 
Oh, I was I was starting to pack right then and there as I was speaking. Oh, okay. okay. I was starting to, yeah. And so as I'm packing, he's getting up and throwing a tantrum like a little baby. Mm-hmm. Throwing my shit around, just being obnoxious. And so in like making a complete mess of the place. So I grab my phone to videotape him. And he just like grabs my phone, throws it to the ground and like tackles me to the fucking bathroom counter. And I'm like screaming and crying and like... It just got so violent. I mean, you know, he had like forced me to go to bed. I, I because I was I was crying and exhausted at this point. It's like six in the morning, and you know how you get when you're tired. It's just you know, I I passed out. I wake up. It's four p.m. I'm still pissed. Still, you know, ready to leave. So I continue to pack. He was like, "I'll do anything for you to stay," and I'm like, "All right, well." For starters, I don't trust you at all. You're not loyal. And he goes, yes, I am. And I go, okay, well, give me your phone, and I'm going to look through it all right now. <laughs> Keep in mind, he got caught for cheating two days ago. Are, how fucking stupid can you be? Are you not going back through your phone and deleting everything at that point? No, he literally couldn't help himself. From from two days before, he had, he had done more shit that would be relationship ending yeah. like he did not want me to see it so then i'm like you know i'm still ready to leave he won't give me his phone i'm i he gives me his phone for half a second i press on something he grabs it back i'm like all right that's my answer so i'm running for the door i'm like i'm getting out of here right now you know leaving my stuff behind i he got more violent and then i finally ended up leaving i went to my friend's house for the night told her what happened she was like bitch are you okay like you this sounds like an awful chain of events. I'm like, I'm just going to have to figure it out, I guess. So I go back the next day to grab my stuff. I end up somehow, because at this point it was Sunday. My cousins were leaving the next morning. So I end up spending the day with them, despite all of this. And just trying to pretend like nothing happened, which was ridiculously difficult. And the next day I told my girl cousin, who I'm really close with, what happened And she helped me pack all my things. She canceled her flight and we drove back home together. So that's how I got out of that. And then I filed for a restraining order. Uh, He got a really good lawyer. I went in without a lawyer. Again, just, you know, 20 year old things. (laughs) Never doing that again either. Always get a lawyer. (laughs) The law can be very complex and difficult to navigate. So, yeah. Never think you know it all, you know? Right. So then I ended up winning the case, though. I got a restraining order for a year, and so the rest is history. I haven't heard from him since. He hasn't heard from me, and I'm happy about it. And that was f- four months ago or so? Yeah. About, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was like four months to this day. All right, so you return home, and you're thinking, are you thinking of, like, jumping back on the site and trying to find somebody? Or are you trying to just clear your head? Are you dating? What's, what, uh, where do you go from here? You just got out of a really bad toxic relationship which there's going to be some ptsd yeah it's just not good so i i was like i'm gonna take a break i couldn't even think about the site for the first few days because i was emotionally a wreck the way i work i move pretty fast Mm -hmm. not always but i've fallen out of love with him a long time before so i was able to move quick I think it was five days out since I had reached home that I got back on the site, maybe like a week after what happened. So it was time to start over. Yeah, basically. And this time going back on the site, I felt like a completely new woman. You know, mm-hmm. I, the best advice I could give anybody my age, being on the site or not, is with any type of arrangement or relationship, do not ever get in a serious relationship until you've had at least like three and make sure at least one of them is toxic because you need to know what to avoid. A lot of times good things happen from, from bad situations. That's how we learn. We grow. We become stronger. I mean, I've gone through a lot of really difficult situations, not physically difficult like that, but mentally Mm -hmm. or you lose sleep and you lose weight and you just, you have anxiety and you just, you don't know where you're going to go from that point forward. Yeah, I mean, over the course of a relationship, I think I lost and put on 20 pounds yeah. like five times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be taxing, right? 
so now you've got kind of a new perspective on the kind of men or people that you want to meet. Mm -hmm. So what, what are you finding out there? Well, for starters, we started something Mm -hmm. and that's when you're going really good. You're a great guy. You're super sweet. So to me, that's, that's a hundred times better than, you know, him. But what I'll say is I come across people like him still. Yeah. But the thing is, somehow I know right off the bat now is like, I just have my intuition is so much more strong. I'm like a trained dog. I can smell it from a mile away. Right. You know? Yeah. I've seen this dog and pony show before. (laughs) What does that even mean? (laughs) So, yeah, you've been to that program. Yeah. And you you can smell it out. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now if I see, you know, here's my version of red flags. First, I don't love the whole, I'm for dating in general, you know, at my age, I don't think you should be dating somebody who has children if you're staying within our age group for dating regularly. The reason I say that is, uh, are you ready to be a stepmom? Because I had to play a stepmom. I had to take kids to Disneyland. And I, I love children, but I'm not, I'm also 21. Mm -hmm. So I'm not ready to do that at all. Well, there may be some that are ready. I know I had a high school girlfriend, and all she talked about was getting married and having kids. And at 18, by God, she was married, and by 19, she had kids. So Yeah, I've I've met a lot of people who have have had kids young, and even though that is exactly what they wanted, so Mm -hmm. that that is what they signed up for, they look back and they're like, you know, I could have waited. It's not like, you know, your ovaries stop working at 23, okay? You right. got you can wait. Yeah. Just just go have fun for a little bit. Yeah. Another thing is I'm not okay with being in a super serious relationship right now. You know, if it is serious, then you I need to have like some type of like cap in my mind because I don't want to I want to have a few more relationships until I know exactly what I want. You know, if the right guy comes along, it's fine, but in our generation, that is Far and few in between. You're not going to really find the perfect dude. I've met a lot of... There's a lot of cheating out there. There's a lot of... Well, you know... You haven't got to this age yet, but I hear it so much from people that are when, when I turn 30 and when I turn 40. I hear so much of this. Well, I'm not even the same person I was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. When I was in my early 20s, I'm not even the same person because of the experiences that we were able to have and the relationships we were able to have. Like you said, you would like to experience those so you kind of know what you want, what you Mm -hmm. don't want. I think that's important. And, you know, to be frank, like, I want to go do some ho shit. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I want to go... On some random person's yacht in Miami and go live it up. I want to be, I want to have a Miami girls trip. I want to go do those fun things people don't get to do. And then they end up in a marriage for, you know, a long time. And then mm. they, after so so much time, they're like, well, now I want to go experience, you know, different things. Like I want to just let loose a little bit. And most, some people just never, you know, get that opportunity. I had, I had always been that person Mm -hmm. to never get the opportunity to i i was always like focused on school focused on work focused on you know i got really into stocks and crypto focused on having a good serious relationship and unfortunately the people who are looking for somebody who like the person i was when i entered the relationships like you know super like a good girl vibe they end up being the most toxic men themselves. Yeah, you care that, like, I've, like, slept with a few people because you have slept with a million and you, you've you experienced other people, so now you think that, like, you know... It's just, like, they're so hypocritical. Mm-hmm. I can't do that. No. I mean, if, you, if you're the same way, then dope. But if you're not and you're that's all you're seeking, red flag. <laughs> yeah. But you're very driven. You you want to some of the goals in life that you told me and things that you want to accomplish are quite advanced for people that, at your age. I thought, how did you get to that point? I mean, that's always who I am. Yeah, it's who like who you're I not work. looking for a job job. No, and anything I look into has to be 
something that has more than just a salary. Mm-hmm. You know, I I need more. Op- I need opportunity on the side. I need a mentorship, things of that nature. I'm okay with, and I love working for myself. Even I want to. You know, I I had done some Airbnb stuff, like mentioned before, and you know, I'm going to continue on that path, grow that side of me. Recently started OnlyFans. Yeah. Going to do that. How's that going? Well, you know, what I've been, it's it's going pretty good. I mean, a lot of people like it. You've got the look. You, you, yeah. You're certainly very attractive. And I think, I'm, I say men, I guess there's going to be women too. But mm-hmm. I would think that you would, you could make a little bit of a headway in that. Yeah. I've been approached with a lot of different management companies. Mm-hmm trying to like manage me and be like oh well you know one one management wanted to like do i did a podcast for them with my friend we Mm -hmm. just talked and asked each other questions and then i did like a little fitness channel thing and then they were like promoting off that but yeah i mean if anyone wants to find me i want to promote my socials and you can find me on tiktok it's kimmy day k-i-m-m-y-d-a-e-e and my Instagram's linked with my OF link. So go hit it up. So if they click on TikTok, go to K I M M Y D A E E, Kimmy Day. There, there's some really cute videos. I've seen them. <laughs> and then. Yeah, uh, I got some funny, I got some yeah. funny videos on yeah. there. And then there's a uh, link to your Instagram, I think, right? Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm doing all that and I'm, I'm looking to get into real estate. I just want to do everything. Mm hmm. I really live an adventurous life. I've, at this point, you know, in the last two years, I've lived in three states. I'm just looking to keep going and see everything. All right. So one question I, I do want to ask you is because you just got to Arizona mm-hmm. a, like a couple weeks ago now. Yeah. You're very new to the area. Welcome to the summer. I am still shocked that I was able to get through on your profile because you said you literally received hundreds of messages yeah i still have hundreds of messages on there yeah so how how did how did i get through or how would one actually get your attention because you're kind of in a an age range that is highly desirable you've got a an unbelievable look that a lot of men are looking for how does one get through to you that is a great question i have not figured it out yet i mean for me I I do have, you know, on seeking qualities that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So usually, like, if someone pops up in the left column, I have way less. I typically have, like, 20 to 50 in that one. Mm -hmm. The one that's filtered out, oh, my God. I don't even know. I checked this morning. It was, like, 200-something. And I'm like, I'm never – I need a seeking manager. Like, that needs to be a thing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, our other co-host, Angie, kind of talked about, we talked about that actually, where they would kind of go through and read the profiles and see if they could find a good match for you on seeking from the messages and, and the profiles there. Because it is time consuming. Yeah. yeah especially if you get hundreds of messages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It you takes know, a while. It's really difficult because there's a few things that can be very alluring. If someone is offering a lot of money. That can be very alluring. If someone's offering a lot of money, though, usually they end up being an asshole. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, they're just looking to for basically, like, you know, a hookup. And that's it. Well, or you might never see them again. I, I have no idea. I've heard that's a thing. I've had people have been like, well, I, you know, I'm not offering that much money, but I will see, I want to see you for, like, the next, like, you know, I want to see you forever. But then some, and those guys who are offering a ton of money, oh, they, they never want to see you again. Blah, blah, blah. And I, I don't even know if that's true, but that's just what I've heard. Amy, what's your experience on that? Um, I mean, it just depends, but... Have you ever, like, people offering large sums of money? Or what, are, what are they looking for? Is it usually, like, an allowance-based thing, or are they just trying to hook up? Um, I mean, it just kind of depends. I, like you... Um, I would say most of the time, everything is just, it just depends on the demographics of where you are, the region. You know, as I've said before, like out what, out east or like out west, you're going to get a higher amount, whereas here you're going to get a lower amount. I mean, I've talked to so many men out here that like they'll 
travel back and forth and they're on the site kind of out there and out here. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's like three or four times higher out East and West than it is here. I mean, it's $300 and because it's a college area, like for here, girls will do anything for $300. So, um, damn, yeah, that's nuts. I, fortunately yeah. I have had a f- okay experience with people. Here. It's not from what I ask. Well, actually, well, I ask a lot more than that, <laughs> but, but what I will say is that I've experienced that too, because I lived in Los Angeles. I, you know, was in another state as well up North. And so I, you know, I have that background of like seeing kind of what's out there. And I've gotten a lot more, like a lot higher offers for sure than here in Arizona, but most people, I mean, they kind of just understand. Or I'll just kind of let them know. I'll just be like, you know, I I am not your Ari's, typical Arizona girl. I'm from somewhere else. And so what you're offering to me, like, you, this might be the highest thing anyone's ever asked of you, but this is the lowest I've ever asked of anyone, I've ever offered for anyone. So, um, you know, take it or leave it. I got 200 other people. Someone's going to say yes. It's like, <laughs> what are you, <laughs> you know, it's it's up to you. I don't care. You know, I'm not one to go back and forth and be like, really, come on, please. I really need, need the 300. No, get out of here. <laughs> right. But the other thing which Kimmy and I are doing together is she is working on a side of my business where actually she can become an equity partner. And this business could literally make multi-millions of dollars. So there's that. The networking part, mm-hmm. the opportunity part. I think that's kind of why that's a little bit of how I got through to her out of those hundreds of messages. I'm really still not sure how, maybe it was just good timing. I don't know. (laughs) It was a lot of everything. I think, you know, everything turned out the way it was supposed to, in my opinion right now. I'm, I'm really happy to have met Marcus because there's a lot of opportunity. He's a great guy and you know, I'm, I'm definitely happy. So I think that, you know, it just, and everything just turned out the way it was, it was meant to turn out. It's probably pretty difficult out there for a lot of people. It just, I, my advice would be if you have a standard, stick to it. Someone will, will fit your standard. That's it. And that's kind of where Amy's at. She, you know, she has a standard that she has. And unfortunately she's getting a lot of guys and we've been trying to work with her profile on how to attract the right men. I- do invest in your profile. Like she said, definitely don't give up on your standards. Uh, something they're all, there will always be. And I think that during the summer, it cycles here because you have a lot of snowbirds and whatnot. So um, I think the winters are probably best here. And so, uh, yeah. All right, Kimmy, thank you for sharing your story. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We'll give people an update and we're going to want you back on the show as you kind of experience Arizona and then as we work together and and just I know more adventures are coming your way so yeah for sure want to hear about those so hey guys be sure to follow us on Instagram and go to our website and share your crazy dating stories at secrets of a sugar daddy.com thank you to Amy and Kimmy and until next episode bye 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 thanks for joining us if you'd like to connect or even be on the show we'd love to hear from you at secrets of a sugar daddy.com 